Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your people, and, and kindle in us the fire, the fire of, of your, your love. A reading from the Gospel of St John. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. A woman makes her way to a well. This isn't any well, it's Jacob's well. Jacob was one of the great patriarchs of the monotheistic faiths. She is quietly and unassumingly drinking from the deep waters of an inherited faith that more purists, which include the friends of Jesus, would question and find dubious. You know, I find it so compelling that Jesus, who is so pure, isn't at all purist. And he spends much of his ministry tearing down walls of purism that inevitably lead to exclusivity and subordination of those deemed less pure. The woman is not pure. She's had four husbands and the husband she's presently with is not hers. Yet Jesus, in the encounter, seems to plummet the well of her soul and in the deep waters seems to see something so pure and so hidden to the rest of us purists. In the seemingly shallow bantering and teasing and playful exchange, something extraordinarily deep and easily missed is happening. First of all, one asks for water, the water of Jacob, and then the other asks for water, the living water, the living water of one greater than Jacob. The woman knows the scriptures well. The prophet Jeremiah spoke of God as the spring of living water forsaken by his chosen people. She's intrigued by the man, the Jewish rabbi, who deigned to acknowledge her, to show her respect, to speak to her as an equal, who didn't assume she was unintelligent or without thoughts worth hearing. She was given status, value and meaning. When Jesus' friends return and they cold shoulder her, his eyes remain fixed upon her and she's touched and transformed by the God who is the fount of living water. The woman with no name, with a renewed confidence, zeal and joy, races back to her own people in Sychar and says, come and see the Messiah. You know, she's the first person to recognize and proclaim Jesus the Messiah. Undoubtedly, she prepared the way for Philip and others to evangelize, evangelize Samaria after the Pentecost event. Friends, when Jesus looks into the wellspring of your soul, what do you think he'll find? What might he see that is so hidden from others? What perhaps needs to be drawn to the surface? Many of us need to recover strength healing and hope. 
Very many of us search for meaning and truth. Like the woman, we can believe we have all the answers and things are sewn up. But I think these days of coronavirus have challenged most of us to the core. Drinking deeply from the living water is another way of saying, receive the Holy Spirit. The woman asked of Jesus, give me this water, will you? And when you take, will you sip gently and timidly? Will you drink deeply? Will you permit to receive so much that you bubble over and flow the living water into the lives of those around you? People you know and people you don't know, the pure and those we might deem not so pure. There's a song I love that goes like this. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. For every situation that has troubled my mind, all my cares and burdens, onto you I roll. Friends, let's pray. Lord Jesus, give us your living water and give us faith and courage to drink deep, that you'll quench our thirst and refresh our understanding in the power of your spirit and to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we long for our refreshing, make, make us ready, ready for, for your, your coming, coming spirit. spirit. As we long for our renewing, make, make us ready, ready for your, your coming, coming spirit. spirit. As we long for your equipping, make, make us ready, ready for, for your, your coming, coming spirit. spirit. As we long for your empowering, make, make us ready, ready for your coming, coming spirit. spirit. 